When we refer to enzyme activity, that is a measure of the rate at which an enzyme converts substrate to products in a biochemical reaction. So if the enzyme, is at, it, enzyme activity is high, that means the reaction is going faster. If the enzyme activity is low, the reaction is going slower. And there are several factors that affect the activity of an enzyme, and one of them is temperature. Remember that temperature is a measure of the kinetic energy of a molecule or of molecules. So when, when the temperature is warmer, that means that the particles of that substance are moving more quickly. They may be moving relative to each other, as in a gas or a liquid. If it's a solid, they will just be vibrating in place. But they'll be moving faster. Generally, increasing the temperature will increase the rate of a reaction, just because there's more movement of particles and they're more likely to encounter each other. Um, there's a model of, of chemical reactions that says that the, in order for a reaction to occur, the, the reactants have to run into each other. They have to collide at the correct orientation, and they also have to collide with enough energy. And so when you increase the temperature and they're moving faster, they're going to run into each other more often, and so the chances of them being aligned correctly are greater, and the chances of them having enough energy to get over that activation energy are greater. So the rate of a reaction will typically increase as the temperature increases. And this also occurs with enzyme-catalyzed reactions. But what happens when, so we're increasing the temperature and increasing the temperature, and the reaction rate will go up to a point, and then it will start coming down. Because what happens to proteins when you heat them excessively? They become denatured. The heat causes the intermolecular attractions that are holding them in their tertiary structure to break and they come apart. And we talked about how you've got, you can have reversible denaturation and irreversible. So heating it is good to a point, and then after that it's counterproductive and will cause the reaction rate to slow down. So when we refer to an optimum temperature, that's the temperature at which the enzyme activity is at a maximum. Usually these enzymes are, are designed to operate at a specific temperature. So you know, your body regulates its internal temperature very closely. Um, if your body temperature drops too low, you sink into hypothermia and you can die. And if your body temperature goes too high, um, perhaps due to heat stroke, you can also die. And there's a lot of different factors that happen when your temperature gets off. And one of them is that it affects the enzyme activity. And so um, small changes in temperature can affect the enzyme activity uh, significantly. So that's important. Another thing that affects enzyme activity is pH, the hydrogen ion concentration. And this is, uh, should make sense to us because those amino acids, there are acidic amino acids and basic amino acids. On those side chains, there are uh, um, acidic and basic groups. And when we change the pH, we change which of them are protonated and deprotonated. And we talked about the zwitter ions and how the acidic and basic ones actually have four different forms instead of three like the, the neutral ones. Um, small pH changes can cause denaturation of the enzyme, and that's going to um, affect the enzyme activity. So optimal, optimum pH is that pH at which enzyme activity is at a maximum. And so we see kind of a bell curve here going from pH 5 up to pH about 7.4. Most of your body is at pH 7.4, and then you, if the pH rises above that, the activity of the enzymes goes down. So enzyme activity is usually restricted to a very narrow pH range, and that's why your body has all kinds of buffer systems in place to maintain the pH of your blood and maintain the pH of your intracellular fluids and all those different things. So any... any um, imbalance, um, like uh, acidosis, where your blood becomes too acidic, that causes 
a lot of problems because it affects the enzyme activity. And the enzymes are what are controlling the reactions in your body. Substrate concentration will also affect enzyme activity. We see that if we, if we hold the concentration of the enzyme the same and increase the substrate concentration, the reaction rate will go up. But it will not go up indefinitely. It will level out and eventually re reach um, a maximum rate. This is called a saturation curve. Because there comes a point where that enzyme is catalyzing reactions as fast as it possibly can. Think back to the kindergartners going over the fence. If the teacher is standing there waiting for kids to come up to her to be lifted over the fence, it, she could work faster. But there will come a point, if you keep increasing the number of kindergartners on her side of the fence, she can only lift them over so fast. And at that point, the reaction rate does not increase anymore when you increase the number of kindergartners. And we have a, a, a name for that. It's called the turnover number. It's the number of substrate molecules transferred per minute by one enzyme molecule under optimum conditions. And so here's just an example of the variation in turnover number. Um, DNA polymerase 1, one molecule of that will catalyze the reaction of 900 um, substrate molecules and up to carbonic anhydrase, which can take care of 36 million molecules in a minute. That's, that's pretty large. And the turnover numbers for enzymes are much higher than for inorganic uh, catalysts. Inorganic catalysts is more in the range of like two to four, five times faster. Uh, the enzyme concentration is also going to affect the rate. <coughs> um, the enzyme is not consumed in the reaction. Um, and so it's efficient for the cells to keep the enzyme concentrations low. The, the, the cell expends energy in making these enzymes, and so it's not going to go on making them and make super high concentrations of them. But if you go into an in vitro situation um, and increase the enzyme concentration, you find that if you add more enzyme, the re rate of reaction will go up. So describe the effect that each of the following changes would have on the rate of a biochemical reaction that involves the substrate sucrose and the intestinal enzyme sucrase. And that reminds me of something I forgot to say about the pH. Um, there are parts of your body where the pH is not 7.4. Your stomach is one of them. Your stomach is acidic. Your body makes hydrochloric acid and pumps it into your stomach. And the enzymes that work in your stomach work at that lower pH, and that is their optimum pH. And, and so uh, there are, it's not all at 7.4. So if we have this substrate sucrose and the enzyme sucrase, which is going to act on the sucrose, if we decrease the sucrase concentration, is that going to cause the rate of the reaction to go up or down? Yeah. It'll cause it to go down. So decreasing the enzyme concentration will decrease the rate. What if we increase the sucrose concentration? That will increase the rate to a point. It won't go on indefinitely. Eventually it will saturate. What if we lower the temperature to 10 degrees Celsius? Is that going to increase or decrease the rate? Decrease. How about raising the pH from 6.0 to 8.0 when the optimum pH is 6.2? That will cause the, the, it to decrease. In your book, they mention um, several uh, practical situations. Um, food decomposing or spoiling is often caused by enzymes, and so what happens to those enzymes when we refrigerate the food? The enzyme activity goes down, right? Lower temperature, the enzyme activity goes down. Um, when, we, when you can 
foods, when you preserve foods by canning them, a lot of things like tomatoes and peaches and stuff, it needs to have a certain acidity level. And the high acid will prevent those enzymes from being active and causing them um, to stop working. Um, things like uh, if you pickle things, you put vinegar in there and a lot of salt, and that's going to deactivate. Sometimes it actually denatures the enzymes. Um, equipment in hospitals is sterilized in an autoclave, which is a high, they use high pressure steam, which superheats the steam. And so they can get the temperature above 100 degrees Celsius. And that causes the enzymes in, in the viruses and the bacteria to become denatured and kills the germs. And so that's a way to sterilize the equipment. So understanding enzyme activity and what affects it has a lot of practical applications. Here's kind of an overview, uh, looking at the mechanism, the lock and key model, where the substrate just comes in um, a little bit like a, you know, a Lego brick coming in and fitting in there. Um, the induced fit model, when the substrate comes in, the enzyme active site actually kind of bends a little bit. And then here's a summary of those four main factors that affect the rate of enzyme activity. So temperature, pH, concentration of substrate, and concentration of enzyme.